Welcome to Unlocking Potential a virtual networking event. So thank you for taking the time to be with us today. My name is Lori Carey and I am the founder and CEO of Nebula Academy. I have with me today, Shauna Rule, the executive director of We Connect the Dots. Together we hope to create a valuable experience for you over the next two hours. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors and partners who helped to make this event possible. Um, you know, AAUW San Diego, who is advancing equity for women and girls, um, please visit their website to learn more about membership and how you can be a part of their mission. Uh, Cirrus Labs, who's helping companies around the globe to digitize their businesses. And Nebula Academy, a workforce accelerator who is building skills for a modern, diverse tech industry. Today's agenda and this program is a fundraiser in support of unlocking potential uh, of women and BIPOC youth worldwide. We have a packed agenda beginning with our keynote topic on digital transformation, followed by a networking and gamification session, and closing out with celebrating our team winners. As a social enterprise, we connect the dots to Nebula Academy, create uh, impact on a local, national, and global level, addressing the needs of workforce capacity of today's modern workforce. Uh, we're helping create a more diverse workforce by creating capacity and a pipeline for talent from underrepresented and underutilized populations across the globe. Our model is unique in our approach to addressing the workforce needs of the growing businesses and the changes in workforce needs resulting from technology innovation. So we help people discover career possibilities, build skills and confidence for real world application, create a more diverse population in tech with a model that takes participants full circle from participant to volunteer giving back to communities and building the next generation of the digital workforce. In, this, in, the, in challenging times, nonprofits need to, be, get, need to get creative. We need to think outside the box and in how we engage our supporters and those we support in building careers in a modern workforce. We wanna ensure that you come away with value from your investment in time today. We know your time is valuable. If we hit the target and provide value to you today, we hope that you'll thank us by making a donation in support of our mission. I'm excited to introduce our keynote speaker, Shell Hegstad. Shell is the Chief Innovation Officer for Cirrus Labs, founder of Ing Direct US, and is a certified digital disruptor and TEDx speaker. I love that, certified digital disruptor. Uh, Shell will be presenting on digital transformation, a topic that is front and center for businesses today. Shell will be discussing digital transformation in a three-part presentation, which includes accelerating the power of digitization, the importance of a digital factory, and how to get started with building an innovation lab. We're going to follow um, with, uh, with Shell's presentation with a fun gamification activity where we're going to introduce you to our new digital platform uh, to support increasing learning outcomes. And you'll like the story behind it, and we'll share more about that later at post uh, Shell's presentation um, and how that product was digitized. So you might want to really pay attention to this session as we will incorporate questions into the fun gaming uh, experience and you'll uh, by paying attention you'll be more likely to be one of the team winners uh, with that i'd like to hand off to shell shell thank you so much for joining us i'm excited to learn all about digital transformation fantastic um and uh, thanks thanks for having me um so uh first off um I wanted to introduce you to my digital twin. Howdy. Did you know that when it comes to innovation, speed is an extremely important factor? If you ask Elon Musk or Snoop Dogg, they may refer to a certain type of speed. What I'm referring to is how fast you can deliver innovation. So when I started to work on this presentation, I was asking myself, is there a better or faster way to do presentations? As a matter of fact, there is. Hello, I'm Shell's digital twin, and I'll put a 20 on that you had no idea. Now, let me pass the mic over to the real Shell. As you can tell, he is a few pounds lighter, taller, and younger looking. Hey, how about technology, guys? I love these new uh, masterpieces of innovation. Um, so real quick, at, uh, at Sirius Labs, um, we are focused on uh, cloud migration. Uh, agile transformation and Atlassian delivery. Um, so um, we have two entities that I may be referring to. Series Labs is our more commercially focused one. Um, and then uh, Agile Trailblazers or ATB is uh, more federal and government. So think of it as Toyota Lexus, except we have Lexus and Lexus. All right. Um, 
So real quick on my background before I dive in. Um, uh, as Lori said, I'm a former co-founder of ING Direct. Uh, we were the fastest bank to 1 million mobile users. So uh, my 15 minutes of fame was to co-ring the bell on the stock exchange. Um, Capital One then acquired us and uh, we helped shift uh, the user base from call it from the analog world to the digital world with uh, user centric design and much better user experience for 45 million customers. And uh, during uh, those years, uh, our team and myself, we won some awards from Apple, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, etc. Uh, and just to keep up to speed with you guys, uh, I need to uh, keep taking certification. So certified digital disruptor, AI strategy, et cetera. And for fun, I, uh, I used to play soccer, but I've grown out of it. Um, and then uh, I do like to cook and shoot sporting plays fairly competitively. But anyway, um, it's not about me. So but for, before we begin, let's just take a poll right here. Um, so Shauna is going to drop a poll and this one is going to be about, you know, when do you have your best ideas? And then we'll look at uh, look at the results. So if you can please respond to the poll in uh, chat. So <laughs> let me let me look at it. So so far we have while walking and in the shower and I want you to take a look at what got zero imagine that no one i've done say a thousand of these polls i've seen two out of a thousand vote for at work what does that tell you about our workplace keep that in mind moving forward um let's say that just so we can navigate the next 45 minutes or so let's just say that we have to find uh uh, Singapore on this map, right? So, but it's tough. It's tough to find Singapore unless you know what planet you're on. You could be on Pandora or if you're on the right continent, right? So since we're here to connect the dots, I figured using a map to kind of help us navigate the transformation framework would be helpful. So, so again, our task is to identify uh, Singapore so we have to head towards Southeast Asia, right? And then we have to go to Singapore. And then at the end of this session, we're going to play a fun game. So that's kind of like the the uh, the map view of what we're going to do. OK, um, so. Moving that to the framework, right? Um, it's going to look something like this. What you see here are all the building blocks um, that should be addressed in a proper framework. Um, so that's that's the world map. Number two, Southeast Asia, right? That's the digital factory we have to um, hone in on. And then the last one is, what are we going to do when this session is over? You and I, are we actually going to have any useful tools or techniques that we can take home with us um, or to the office? So that's uh, that's Singapore. That's number three. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, next, I want to play a four minute video. However, it is five years old, but it as relevant as ever. Please take a listen. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to innovate in, you. Right now, you are a central point of the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization, mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation. Well, the list goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? 
How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changes are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion, and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business models. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Humanity is where true and lasting value is created. We will engage late and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. Um, I hope you guys enjoy that as much as I do. I've played it more than a hundred times. So I never get tired of it. So based on what you just listened to, can you in chat put one word that you took away from this? Just one word over the next five seconds. Just whatever comes to your mind. All right. We see innovation, disruptive, human, probably meaning there is room, there is room for us humans moving forward. So great. Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, so let's jump into the, the framework, all right? Um, and the number one item for success and in innovation is di diversity. So it's very uh, apropos that we're here in this forum today, um, but I've led many teams around the world, set up offices in South America, Central America, Asia, Europe, um, and I've always had the pleasure of having an extremely diverse team. And uh, that's uh, extremely meaningful and important. Um, if you know Jerry Blumengarten, he's uh, an author and a you know world famous uh, teacher out of New York. And uh, I really love what he said. Uh, he basically said that um, you know tech is an equalizer, right? And by the way, he wrote the book Connecting Students with the World. So um, here is the framework. I'm going to walk through it, um, you know, one pillar at a time. So uh, on the left side, you're going to see the main pillars of a framework, and then you're going to see the building blocks that makes up that pillar in the middle. And on the right hand side, you're going to see what the desired outcome is. So for a strategy, you want a, a board of directors and an executive team that's on board and can communicate a vision clearly. The next layer is uh, a mission critical one. And that is the human capital one. Do you have a, a workforce that's digital native? Do you need a workforce that's digital native? 
And I would argue with every industry, there is some kind of digital opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're a farmer, um, uh, manufacturer, what have you. And then in the new world of working remote, um, what's the training? What's the focus? What's the follow up? What's the culture there? Um, and then the, the cloud, uh, sorry, the modernized technology is once you have the other pillars in place, you know, uh, do you have uh, an old server sitting in a corner and uh, Excel or have you automated and modernized your technology? Um, with AI, uh, are you thinking about it? Does it apply to your industry? Um, and then for emerging tech, keep in mind, this is not comprehensive. It's more meant to be, is someone at your company looking at um, looking at new technology, whether it's voice, blockchain, it, you can add any other technology in here. Um, you know, so again, it's not meant to be comprehensive, just as an illustration. Um, so basically, uh, and at the end of the day, you need to ship, right? What's the point of doing all of this if you can't ship a product or service? So we're going to uh, spend some time on the top layer uh, moving forward here. So I know it looks overwhelming, but think of think of this as Gordon Ramsay giving you a recipe with every ingredient being the building blocks. OK, um, so we're going to make it more digestible that way, pun intended. By the way, this is what the fangs are using, the Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix and Google's um, of the world, right? Um, they are executing at a very high level. Um, and uh, but this framework should apply whether you're small, medium or large company. All right. Next poll um, is going to be uh, a fun one. So if you have started your digital transformation journey, and if this was a selection of songs, what song would best represent your company and where you're at? So again, we're going to list uh, a few songs here, and you're going to pick one that you think best represents uh, your company and where you're at on your transformation journey. So hopefully some of you are, are uh, subscribing to Spotify and Apple Music and what have you. All right. Well, uh, let me see. Maybe we'll just uh, move on here. Um, so, um, according oh, wait, did to, you, did you not see the response? See the response? No, no, I did not. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. There you go. Um, sorry. I'll go back. Um, so, <laughs> imagine. Okay, this is fairly standard, I would say. Uh, some, some are already champions, right? Um, and no one is six feet under. Uh, that's amazing. Um, okay. And then, uh, imagining where we want to go. That's cool. Um, anyway, I figured we have a little bit of fun as we uh, move forward. So, um, next one is, um, according to McKinsey. So it doesn't matter how much technology you spend how much money you spend on technology at the end of the day, it comes down to people. So 54% of the reasons why transformation fails is due to culture. You, we can break up culture into, you know, many, many blocks and spend a day on it. But uh, um, that is a, a real number. Um, next, um, you know, in terms of uh, modernized technology, we're going to talk about the cloud, but you have all kinds of DevOps, SecOps, platform ops, AI ops, cloud ops, analytics ops. And I thought I actually was going to add the no ops as a joke at the end, but there is an actual no ops, meaning no operation. Everything is working flawlessly. Um, and then um, going to the cloud and, and uh, having a cloud infrastructure is obviously um, probably the hot topic these days. So. Um, so what I want to um, uh, what I wanted to do was to uh, just for you to understand some of the challenges. Uh, we want to uh, take a listen to a video that we just created at Sirius Labs. So please don't view it as a sales pitch. It's not the intent. It's to view it as informational. All right. Um, here we go. Take a listen. A report from Cloud Security Alliance suggests that 90% of CIOs 
have experienced failed or disrupted data migration projects. We all understand that the cloud is a vital asset to an enterprise, but getting closer to the cloud is only part of the solution. Cirrus Labs is a digital transformation consulting company specializing in cloud migration and architecture. In addition to enhanced security from both an internal policy and external cyber threat perspective, there are numerous challenges for cloud migration. Among the biggest are rapid assessment, autonomous provisioning, and infrastructure as code. Rapid assessment. You should be able to run a rapid assessment of your environment to determine application and service needs. With a full end-to-end -end assessment, we can dashboard your environment in order to plan provisioning. Autonomous provisioning. The most efficient way to provision an environment is to use quick and deployable scripts. The ideal outcome is to develop IAC pipeline for continuous growth and scalability. Finally, infrastructure as code. When you manage your infrastructure in a descriptive model, you are able to test applications early in the development cycle. Ceres Labs facilitates an IAC pipeline integration for continuous deployment and scalability by targeting any cloud environment. Cost is another critical element, so why not start small? Whether it's hundreds of apps or one at a time, using an iterative agile approach, cloud migration can be a gradual transition, even one application at a time. With a full end-to-end -end analysis and testing process, our team has the tools to configure the ideal cloud solution for you. When searching for a leader... All right. Um, hopefully, uh, you picked something uh, up from that video. Um, next, let's talk about emerging tech. And I just picked robotics as an example. So when you say robotics, what does that mean? You could have robotics... Uh, robotic programming language. You can have more of a customer facing uh, physical robot like Pepper or something more industrial grade like Spot. Okay, so let's look at Spot. Um, if you remember, there was one uh, mention of it in the video. They he talked about combinatorial innovation. I love that. And what that means is think Tesla or Spot if you're familiar with it, but let's use Tesla. Um, it's basically got LIDAR, right? Uh, computer visioning, APIs, AI, right? Uh, sensors and ra radar and eight cameras. And, and um, you know, so it's, it's a combination of technologies that's built into a great user experience. Um, so um, if you're familiar with Spot, um, I, I'll just play 10 seconds of this so you can get a feel for what it is. It's basically a quad robot. Uh, that has 360 degree vision sensors, environmental mapping, etc. I think you get an idea of, of what it is. Um, so it, this is not a sales pitch for Spot. It's more to share what combinatorial, uh, combinatorial innovation might look like, right? So in Spot's case, uh, he or she may be used for site documentation, reading gauges. They can actually zoom in on gauges 100 feet away, uh, detecting leak. They use it on oil platforms. They use it on, uh, you know, inspection at plants and and really actually at uh, nuclear facilities as well. All right, so so that's basically um, the uh, the concept, and uh, it was used last year for um, for um, uh, directing patients, you know, in an ER, um, you know, to uh, to where they needed to go using no contact technology. So basically interviewing patients, sending them to, so triaging basically. Um, at the end of this guys, um, you know, this is 
this has to be a symphony, right? So, you know, you have Pavarotti here. So, you know, he should be, be the chief digital officer, right? Um, but what's critical here and, and also to help avoid the culture, uh, the failure of culture, and also uh, showing executive support, uh, I actually believe that every executive team member should be digital native. If not, how can you sit there at the table and have a say uh, when it comes to digital if you don't understand uh, many of the building blocks and elements and, and outcomes that it can produce, all right? So with that, uh, let's do a quick, um, put maybe one question on this. Uh, Shauna, you can read it off if you want to, just, uh, or actually. Sure, sure. Sure, folks, sure, folks, if you have if a you question, question for Shell, please submit it in the chat. We can't unmute your mics at this point. So at this point, uh, we'll take one quick question on transformation if it shows up in five seconds. This is your chance. Um, I'm not seeing any questions at this All point. Right. Yeah, all right, cool. It's all right, uh, you can still post them. We'll uh, try to address them after, all right? Um, okay, so, um, you know, what is a digital factory? Um, so we're gonna uh, add a poll here, right? Around the digital factory, just to get a sense for, uh, for your knowledge of what it is. So here comes the poll. Again, we wanna know, do you know what a digital factory is? Yes or no? Are you seeing the results this time, yeah. Shell? Yes, yes, yes. Great. Okay. All right, great. So um, we have 91% saying they do not know what it is, and 7% uh, or so um, saying they do. Okay, great. So with that, um, let's go and figure out what a digital factor is. Have you ever asked yourself how Apple, as an example, can execute like this with all these features? Have you ever thought of it? Um, so the reason is that each of their features basically have a digital factory behind them. So there is a, a massive digital team for their environmental uh, feature, water and dust resistance, right? There is a, a big team that has a factory around LIDAR, right? So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dig into the factory and try to get a better understanding uh, over the next five minutes or so of what it is, right? So again, if you remember the map, um, a digital factory is a way of um, processing um, many ideas as quickly as you can um, at the lowest possible cost from a use case, right, to MVP, to potentially operationalizing it. So that's what we're going to talk about, right? And by the way, this framework and the digital factory is not something I came up with, if you will. It this is based on years of experience at ING Direct, Capital One, and then the last few years at Sirius Labs and ATB, where we actually are uh, working with clients on co-creating these solutions. So I've stood up uh, a few of these digital factories. Okay. Um, again, McKinsey is also saying that if you want to get traction on your transformation journey, um, this may be a good way to go. Okay, so what is it? You want to have a use case uh, that you want to identify quickly, and that should come from um, your uh, business stakeholders. So if you're a bank, that should come from the head of uh, savings uh, products, right? And from the head of mortgage, uh, mortgage portfolio, and from the head of CDs and from the head of auto lending, right? So, um, and the reason is if you don't, these use cases tend to lose traction and even die as they uh, work their way through the factory. So you need your sponsor to show up with, um, with some ownership of this. Then you move that as quickly as you can to a proof of technology or proof of concept. Um, and this is where you want to fail quickly, right? You want to try something, come up with a hypothesis, have a quick workshop, and then go, you know what? Uh, doing our new mobile banking app uh, in all blue design, it's a no-go. Customers hate it. And by the way, adding auto lending, people are already frustrated. 
you know, they have too many lending products and help me save my money instead. Um, so, and this is where you want feedback as you progress. And then MVP stands for minimum viable product. What that means is, um, are you able to and willing to stand up on the stage at your company and announce the product? for an audience. So it should have a key feature already. It doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles, but it should have a key feature. Um, and then uh, once the executive team says, yeah, this is awesome, let's keep funding it, then what you want to do is move it to 1.0, right? Where it may have more bells and whistles and more features. And then how do we scale it and operationalize it? So those are the stage gates in a factory. and. Um, and you also want to build an ecosystem um, as you're standing up your factory. And what that means is, say in this case, say you, you're a bank, again, you want to explore auto, auto lending. It's not a product you have today. Um, what you want to do is work with startups and accelerators and universities and try to find out, has someone already built an auto lending platform? The answer is, 100% absolutely. There are tons of solutions. So why on earth would you go and build your own? You wouldn't in this case. You would go to the marketplace, talk to a startup and say, hey, uh, we have a use case. Can we license your platform for 60 days, 90 days, 30 days? Uh, we just want to test something out. And by the way, do you have any usage data we can borrow? If this works out, um, you know, we're going to offer you an opportunity to uh, work with our company, right? Um, and, and that's what you want. You don't want to build all of this internally. At least you have a 50% head start if you go and get the core features of the engine that you're looking at, all right? Um, and uh, what's, a, what's a proof of concept? How big should it be? Well. Uh, in my opinion, it should take about 30 days and cost no more than 30K. Clearly, there are exceptions, right? I worked on a POC that was close to a million and, and lasted four or five months. And then I worked on a POC that was 48 hours and was 150 bucks. All right. So, um, so don't get hung up in that. But these are rule of thumbs. You know, if it takes more than 30 days, it's turning into a project. Okay. Um, so, and speed is absolutely everything when it comes to a digital factory and innovation, all right? So hopefully you're gonna enjoy this clip. This is one of my favorites. Uh, take a listen. You're gonna build a car to beat Ferrari with a Ford, correct? <laughs> How long did you tell them that you needed? Two, three hundred years? Ninety days. <laughs> so, um, again, one of my favorite quotes, um, you know, innovation is what you need to win, right? So I have an example later here. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip through some of this, but just talk about the power of cloud. Um, so the power of cloud is that if you look on the left side, let's say that you're on-prem, on-premise um, versus cloud, the icon on the left. Um, and let's say that you have your data-driven uh, company. Um, on the top is the factory that I just talked to you about. Um, and that factory, you know, does have the stage gates, POC, MVP, et cetera. As you, as you know by now, that can take weeks, sometimes months. Um, and contrast that with a cloud, call it an AI factory, where you're laser focused on AI as your factory focus, all right? That is ours, right? You can literally, um, you can literally go to a Microsoft Azure and it has a playbook for you where you can move data sets from start to building and training it, to deploying and managing it. And why would you not take advantage of this? They have spent millions, if not billions, trying to set this up for success, okay? Um, so um, let me see. I think we are gonna run out of time, so I'm gonna skip this. 
But imagine your Gino Steakhouse, since I live in Philly, right? And I'm a bit of a foodie, right? So, um, so let's see how AI could be applied to Gino's uh, cheese st steaks, right? So the data sets are sales, number of customers, right? Number of six inch bread rolls, how much cheese did we sell? But imagine if they said um, using deep AI instead of narrow AI, deep AI could be if the Eagles have a home game at 1 p.m. and Vegas has them 10 under, what is the prediction for baguette sandwich sales, all right? And it may come back and say, with those uh, uh, data points, there's a 38% increase in baguette sandwich and 45% increase in Parmesan cheese, all right? So that's an example. All right, um, I'm going to uh, skip that. And then here's what we're going to do the, the, the rest uh, of the time. We're going to spend it on, unfortunately for you, you will listen to my TED presentation. Um, and But here, here is where we are. Remember, we're trying to find Singapore. So now we're in the digital factory and we're going to hone in on the proof of concept part. Um, does that make sense? So let's explore how you and I can start our own $100 innovation lab, all right? Uh, some of the info here is a little dated. This is a three-year-old uh, presentation, but I think you get the drift, all right? Everyone is welcome to listen and take any knowledge back home. $100, this is how I operate. To heck with everything else, we just got to do it, all right? Here you go, take a listen. $100 trillion. That is the market size that you and I have available to us. The $100 trillion number sounds very Dr. Evil. However, that is the number that the World Economic Forum has forecasted the value to be globally over the next 10 years for digital transformation across all industries. Just to understand the size and magnitude of that number, let's compare it to the United States GDP at a tiny 18 trillion. How do we unlock that value? Just like how you would eat an elephant, one piece at a time. So I'm here to propose to you that the way we're going to unlock that $100 trillion value is by building one proof of concept at a time. There is simply no better way to convince a senior executive, an investor, friends and family that you should pursue your idea than by showing them a proof of concept. Stop telling me, show me, what do you mean? It doesn't matter if you're short or tall, young or old, if you live in Kazakhstan, Sudan, Brazil, Beirut, New York, or San Francisco, it's irrelevant. If you don't have entrepreneurial culture in you already, don't worry. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to give you the tools and resources that's going to kickstart you on your own innovation journey. Personally, I grew up in Norway, above the Arctic Circle on a farm center left in this picture. And the reason you can tell this is Norway is it's July and there is only a little bit of snow on the ground. I was about seven or eight years old and today the fence broke on the farm. On the farm, something always breaks. I had three brothers and one newborn sister. So the fence was broken. We didn't form a fence committee we didn't hire a fence consultant, nor did we document the process and submitted it to the farming compliance department. No, we fixed the damn fence. Otherwise, we wouldn't have dinner. That is how you embed entrepreneurial culture. Don't feed the troops until the project is done. I'm here to walk you through the processes and the tools and resources for how to build a proof of concept. So first, we need a framework. The framework we're going to apply is called design thinking. Design thinking is all about embedding the customer or personas that you may have identified as early as possible in your product development lifecycle. 
So in this case, we got the wheel. That's the idea. We're building the prototype, the bicycle, because we talked to some people and they didn't want a wheel. They wanted transport within the city. But then as you talk to more customers and had more user studies and did more research, they may say, well, I really wanted a low cost transportation method, the motorcycle. So we're going to focus on the prototype and proof of concept elements. Typically, you would move forward with what's called MVP, minimum viable product, and the actual product, and you would do several iterations of that. But let's stay in this box for a little bit. So stop telling me. Show me what you mean. So I'm going to show you two examples, one proof of concept and one prototype. The proof of concept is basically I'm at my house. This is not a stage kitchen. This is my own kitchen. I'm using my phone and I'm pulling down an espresso machine from a digital catalog. I'm placing it on my kitchen counter, spinning it around, make sure it fits right to my bear, ne next to my bear keg, for those of you with sharp eyes. And it looks good. It's the right depth, it's the right height. I'm using voice, I'm gonna change the color to black because that's really what I want. And then, I can double check it, make sure that, all right, yeah, it looks good in black. That's what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and place the order and hopefully it's on my doorstep tomorrow morning. The prototype is of different fidelity, not always, but most of the time. In other words, it's cheaper to make and faster to create. A POC usually requires more resources and time. So the, proto the prototype is a personal prototype and of interest to me. I like steaks. I grew up on a farm. You already know that. So when I want a steak perfectly made for me, medium rare, 128 degrees or 54 degrees Celsius, I cook it at home. However, if we are out, how do you know that the steak is approximately 128 degrees? You really don't, unless you cut into it, sample it. So here is how I'm going to solve that problem. Meet the axometer. It's a prototype. <laughs> the idea is that the LCD display is built into the handle. So when the steak arrives at my table, I can just look at it, do a few Instagram photos. I think this will be a killer on Instagram personally. And then I can see, yeah, that is 128 degrees. I'm a happy customer. However, there may be some issues um, from the restaurant owners in the sense of they don't want 15 to 20 axes flying around at eight o'clock every evening. I can understand that. So it's a prototype, but it may lead to other iterations. Now I'm gonna give you the ingredients for how you can build your own innovation lab for $100. I've built low cost innovation lab, I've been part of teams that have built multi-million dollar innovation labs. Here are the ingredients. $15 in markers and sticky. $5 for a sketchbook where you can draw out your big idea and storyboard it. $20 for a whiteboard because sometimes you just want to scratch down some notes real quick. And then some templates that can be specific to your industry or if you're a big fan of your own operating system like iOS, Android, Facebook, Etc. then you can buy those templates specifically for that. And there are cloud-based services available that are offering you um, monthly subscription-based um, services where you can get a plethora of digital assets available to you. And lastly, a presentation template for either Keynote or PowerPoint. Extremely low cost, but high value. I use this all the time for personal work. Um, and the idea is that you take your sticky notes, your ideas, your prototyping output, and then put it into a presentation that you want to socialize. And here is the best news. If you cycle through three or four of these um, prototyping cycles, you're going to be amazed at how good you're going to be at storytelling. And you're going to be totally impressed at how quickly you can assemble tactical artifacts for your idea. It doesn't matter what industry you're doing this for. It doesn't matter what technology, nonprofit, for profit, public, private. It's technology agnostic, what I just went through. 
blockchain, artificial intelligence, C Sharp, Java, bring it on. And if someone tells you that your idea is a stupid one, feel free to share this slide. There are some guidelines, if you will, around how to assemble a team and the consistency of that team. This image happens to be from ING Direct. We were the first bank. ING Direct is probably known to be one of the most successful global digital banks. And what we employed early on, this is 11 years ago, was visioning sessions, innovation sessions, and hackathons before it became a cool word. word. And we put rails on some of the, on the projects. Rails are typically time and money, typically. So the idea was, this is specifically for a US savings product. It shouldn't take more than six months to build and shouldn't cost more than $100,000. It's good to apply rails to keep the troops in control so they don't go for total scope creep, unless you don't want that. So I don't recommend it early on in the ideation phases because you want to you wanna get all the good ideas out first. And then how do you assemble a killer team? Did you know that 70% of corporate innovation labs are failing? Failing meaning they're not outputting what they were intended there to do. That is a big number. And the reason is most of them end up being executive playhouses or innovation theaters where they just show it to their customers and say, hey, look, we got this multi-million dollar office with free coffee. Come on in. And it's all about the people. It's all about you, you, and I. It's the culture. The team, each team should consist of about five people. And it's not just me saying it. Jeff Bezos said it best. He said, if it takes more than two medium-sized pizzas to feed a team, it's too big. And I don't think it's by coincidence that most global SWAT teams consist of five team members. You need a subject matter expert, but you need as diverse as possible of a team. I've led many global teams. I, I often hire not solely for diversity, but I ensured it's there because it gives you much, much better ideas. And then lastly, put on an alternative words lens. If you're in the health or if you're servicing the healthcare market, why don't you ask yourself, what would Harley Davidson do in this case? If you're in finance or manufacturing or pharma, ask yourself, what would Amazon do? I think those are extremely helpful. And if you have an idea, like my axometer, that you're passionate about, don't ever give up on it, okay? Meet the epitome of perseverance, James Dyson. Did you know that he built 5,126 prototypes over 15 years, and they all sucked <laughs> in a good way? Then he built one more, number 5,127. And that sucked so bad that the board of directors said, we're shipping it. And before you knew it, it was a multi-billion dollar company. So I'm here to propose to you that we've identified a market of 100 trillion. We've shared some tools and resources and techniques for how you can get there. But now it's all up to you. So open the door. Bring in the box that's outside. More than likely, it's a new espresso machine in black. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and get started. Thank you. OK, um, hopefully most of you are awake. Um, so I know we're running short here. So, um, But this is a key question to ask yourself as you're um, entering into the innovation space if you're not there already. And this was the this is considered the most impactful phrase to ask within the innovation industry. How might we? So in your case, how might we be more, more innovative? How might we establish ourselves as an industry leader in AI? 
how might we leverage the subscription model, right? How might we get 500 pilot users at no cost, right? So when you ask yourself these things, uh, they're extremely popular and impactful. And I'll, just to illustrate the difference, um, I'm going to show uh, share this example. So this is, uh, as you know, right, the music, the famous uh, music player. Um, so Steve Jobs didn't ask his team to say, find me the smallest memory card and the smallest chipset and the smallest LED, although that's what everyone else did, right? Everyone else, that's what you do. What he said was, how might we put a thousand songs in your pocket? And that drove the product to look like this as opposed to a bulkier and chunkier music player. So keep that in mind. Ask yourself, how might we do how might we engage? How might Holly Davidson address this if they were running this? OK, and then lastly, I'll leave you with this. Uh, and that is um, we all believe in science, right? Uh, I hope so. Um, so basically keep it in mind and hey, I'm just sharing scientific findings with you guys, not suggesting at all that you should do this. With that, let's do the last poll and then we're going to head over and play some games. So the last poll is um, it's, it's going to be around. Did you find um, this valuable or not? And uh, please be honest. Otherwise, we're going to track you down. <laughs> OK, um, well, that's good. I can show my boss this, uh, you know. Um, all right, great, guys. I know we're running a little bit behind. So with that, I want to thank you. Here's my contact information if you need it. Um, and then let's do a couple of Q&As perhaps and then move on and, uh, and uh, you know, do something fun. All right? Sure, thank you, thank so, you much, so much. Thank you so much, Joe. Let's open let's it open up for more up. questions in the chat. Please go ahead and submit any questions that you have for him. OK, I, I have one. Um, if you, regarding your digital transformation framework, Shell, in order of priority, which of the building blocks would you recommend? I do recommend the digital factory if, if you want to showcase um, to the rest of the organization what a digital can do for you and how to get a head start on Industry 4.0, if you will. Um, but the bottom pillar is mission critical. Uh, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know if you have support, if you don't know uh, what the governance model is going to be, then uh, you do need a strategy, right? Otherwise, it's it's kind of like cooking. I like cooking. If I start a meal and I just start dropping ingredients in there, it's not going to end up well, right? I need a strategy. I'm making New York strip steak at 128 degrees, baked potato, Caesar salad, right? So you do need a, you do need a strategy. Um, OK, um, let me see with that. Um, let me see. Uh, I do. Um, I do want to uh, just say before we leave her that I hope you learned something. Um, it looked like it in the survey uh, and that you can take some of the information with you. Um, and then uh, as we're going to pass the hat around uh, for a few donations, um, keep in mind the amazing work that Shauna and Lori and the team are doing in driving funding for scholarships and programs, not only for next generation, but for the ones needing it the most, right? So I'm just humbled to be a small part of the amazing work they are doing. And lastly, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I do realize time is our most valuable currency. Let's go play some games. Thank you so thank much, Phil. So you are amazing. Um, I, we just love listening to your your um, TED talk and your your presentation about uh, digital transformation. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay, thanks, Shell. It was great.